Hi guys! Welcome to my channel. My name is Ella. You're 7 of 8. Not 7 of 9, okay? 7 of 8, Trekkie Chick from Star Trek. I hope you like my outfit. <laughs> so for today's video, we're gonna be watching uh, Movies Are Wrong, Why You Can't Fall Into a Black Hole Even If You Tried. Black Hole 6 by Astron. And this is recommended to me by uh, Mega Twingo. Thank you so much, Mega Twingo. Half of my videos are recommended by you. I really appreciate you recommending me videos. And I really appreciate your support. So if you guys have something in mind, you want to share, you want to recommend me, um, please feel free to comment down below my, co on my comment section. I would really, really appreciate that. And thank you in advance. Um, so I'm, a ki I'm kind of excited because I want to know why. It says here why you can't fall into a black hole. So this is going to, uh, I think this is going to remove one of my fear in life to, f to fall into a black hole. So I'm really excited. Let's watch it. <laughs> Movies are wrong. Why you can't fall into a black hole? Uh, even if you tried by Astro. Let's watch it. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Brilliant, okay. Falling into a black hole is a lot harder than it sounds. You might expect it to be relatively easy. After mm -hmm. all, aren't these the ultimate absorbers? Quite literally the largest sources of gravity out there. Shouldn't it be easier to fall into them than any other thing in the universe? You might have thought so, but paradoxically, your intuition is wrong. These galactic moors are one of the hardest places in the universe to actually get inside. So much so, <laughs> during his lifetime, Einstein believed you couldn't get inside them at all. And not only that, but black holes might even eject you away from them at speeds close to the speed of light. Want to know why? Yes, well, why? Well, we're about to find out. Okay, let's find out. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Join me today. I think this is my first time to watch Astrum. concept that turns common sense on its head and uncover the incredible effects this has on space and matter. There is quite literally nothing like it in the rest of the universe. Wow. By now, if you have been watching the other videos in this series, you are familiar with the idea of black holes. They are yes. incredibly dense objects that have so much mass in so small an area yes. that space curvature has become infinite. infinite. This means that no object can escape a black hole once it passes the demarcation Not zone known as the event horizon. Not even light can move fast enough to outpace the acceleration caused by these massive objects' incredible gravity. Mm -hmm. So shouldn't it be that these objects would be incredibly easy to get into? Like a slide that gets steeper and steeper the further along it you go, you might expect to speed up more and more the closer you get to the black hole center. However, while this is right, it is also wrong. You do speed up, so much so that your speed will begin to approach the speed of light. However, in wow. almost all circumstances, you will not find yourself approaching the center of the black hole. And yes. this isn't me talking about some strange quirk of time or relativity, but something that will be observable from whatever frame of reference you're watching from. Confused? Don't yeah, worry, confused. allow me to explain through the real world example of something called an accretion disk. Black holes are, at their very heart, very simple. In something known as the no hair theorem, Black holes no are said to be devoid theory. of almost any feature, just like a head with, well, nothing on it. The features of a black hole are usually fairly plain too. They have charge, mass and spin, yeah. and that's about it. We discussed most of them in my last video, which you can check out here. As such, accretion disks are not actually a necessary part of black holes. Black holes can exist just fine without them, sitting there dark and unobservable in space. However, when mass, such as an unlucky star, strays too close to the black hole's gravitational pull, it can be torn apart by the vast forces at work and sucked towards the black hole's center. Strangely enough though, this matter does not all immediately fall into the black hole's event horizon. Instead, the matter usually coalesces into a sort of flat ring that orbits around the black hole outside the event horizon. While eventually it does all enter, this process can take a long time. 
Some accretion disks take 100 to 1,000 million years to be completely absorbed. So what is going wow. on here? Why does the matter not simply enter the black hole? The answer is wow. that it comes up against a surprising principle of physics known as the conservation of momentum. First described by mathematician John Wallace in 1670, and then pioneered by his contemporary Newton a decade or so later, the idea goes like this. If you have a group of objects, the motion of those mm -hmm. objects, aka their momentum, collectively must always remain the same. If one particle with momentum bumps into a particle that is standing still and both bounce away from mm -hmm. each other, the amount of total motion for the two particles must equal the amount of the first particle on its own. No momentum can be lost. If you have a rocket on a launch pad with zero momentum, it can only give itself momentum by firing a propellant in the opposite direction. Once you add up the amount of momentum imparted to the air by the propellant going down, and the amount of momentum given to the rocket by going up, then the upward momentum and the downward momentum are equal, resulting in the same net zero momentum you had to start with. This falls a little outside our expectations. After all, we as humans often stop and start walking around, seemingly without obeying this law. However, if you evaluate all the particles involved, this law is always kept. You would struggle to move anywhere without a floor to push against. Momentum imparted yeah, to the like floor must equal the amount of momentum imparted to you, but in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. You just don't notice it, because the floor is so much bigger than you. The amount of momentum you give to it does not move it in any noticeable way. But what has this got to do with falling into a black hole? Well, consider this next example, yeah, this time to do with angular momentum. Imagine a ballerina who has their arms outstretched and is mm -hmm. spinning on a single point. The particles in their hands... A ballerina always uses an, ex as an example in explaining this uh, black hole. ...have momentum. They are moving a certain distance in a certain amount of time. However, when they tuck their arms close to their body, what happens? Mm -hmm. Well, they suddenly start spinning much faster. This is a classic example of momentum trying to be conserved. You see, yes. the momentum in the hands is still trying to travel at the same speed it was previously traveling yes. at. However, suddenly because it's close to the body, it's now traveling a much smaller distance, but is doing so at the same speed. Effectively, it has much less distance to travel to complete one revolution, and as a result, completes that revolution much faster. This causes the ballerina to spin faster when they tuck their hands in, and slower when they stretch yes. their hands out. Now imagine this on a cosmic scale. In most scenarios, matter does not fall in a perfectly straight line towards a black hole. Almost always it will miss it slightly and will start spiraling in towards its center as it's caught in the black hole's gravity. It now has angular momentum. As it gets closer towards the center of the black hole, it starts speeding up moving at the same speed on a smaller and smaller orbit, gaining more and more angular spin the further down the gravity well it falls, just like the ballerina. You want to go a little further in, you have to spin a little faster. However, unlike the ballerina, this matter has the speed of light to contend with. Nothing in the universe can travel faster wow. than the speed of light. This is a law discovered by Einstein. So what happens to our spinning matter as it falls further and further into the black hole? Due to the massive forces and curvature involved, it eventually reaches a point where it cannot go any faster. It's hit a roadblock. And because it cannot spin faster, it cannot fall further into the black hole. This has several effects. To begin with, as you can imagine, that creates friction. All of this matter, spinning at such blistering speeds around the edge of the event horizon, starts bumping into each other. And when this is taking mm -hmm. place at near light speeds, things get very hot. Matter in a black hole's accretion disk can reach temperatures up to 10 million Kelvin. This is enough to melt anything Kelvin. down to a hot plasma. All these constant collisions pummel the atoms wow. involved, causing them to give off more and more of this energy, like squeezing a lemon. This reduces their mass. 
between 10 and 40% of an atom's mass is given off this way in the form of energy, which then radiates out across the universe. For point of comparison, nuclear fusion, the process taking place in the sun, converts only about 0.7% of mass into energy. Let that sink in for a moment. Consider how bright Whoa. the sun is at 0.7%. Yes. How bright can a black hole's accretion disk get? The wow. brightest such disks are known as quasars, and they can reach brightnesses so that exceed 1,000 times the total brightness of every star in the Milky Way combined. Wow, the so good it's news way is more that, than additionally, brighter than some of that momentum starts to be shed with the departing energy. More gets shed by imparting it to matter further up out of the accretion disk as faster moving particles knock into slower particles moving just above them, giving them an extra push and slowing down the lower particles. In this way, matter starts to lose its angular momentum and begins to finally fall into the black hole itself. More momentum can be shed through one of the most striking features of quasars and black holes, their jets. We don't understand everything about these jets, how they form and what they are comprised of, and only a small fraction of black holes with accretion disks have them. But current theories suggest that they are caused by magnetic forces that are created by the spinning accretion disk, or even the rotational power of the black hole itself, which draws up material from the accretion disks and fires them out into space. It's likely that as the accretion disk spins, magnetic fields form, in keeping with Ampere's law, due to all those moving electrically charged particles. The power and shape of these fields are such that there is only a narrow channel at the north and south poles of the black hole for particles to escape. These magnetic fields may work in a similar way to the rifling on a gun, channeling particles down a narrow barrel. Particles moving at near relativistic speeds have only one direction they can go, even though we don't quite know yet why they go. Perhaps they are like the steam of a kettle, fired out through the only gap that exists in the face of this incredible gravitational and heat pressure. And when they go, they go. Relativistic oh, jets travel of a black further than the galaxies they originate from, and are often millions, if not billions, of light years long. One jet with this catchy name has its X-rays wow. reaching Earth from 12.7 billion light years away, albeit faintly. This is because the radiation produced by such jets is very focused in one direction. In an effect known as relativistic beaming, or the lighthouse effect, when the beam is pointed away from us, it is much harder to see. Take for example the now famous M87 galaxy. Here, very clearly, a relativistic jet mm -hmm. is detected by Hubble. This is the one oh, coming so they have towards us. Okay. There is very Actually, likely it's a another jet but we can't see it because it's going in the other direction. Okay. It's worth noting that this energy does not come from the black hole directly. Remember, nothing can escape from a black hole. Instead, the matter and radiation come from the accretion disk surrounding the black okay. hole. And again, a lot about these jets is still theoretical. We can see them, even observe them moving over time, but we don't fully understand them or what causes them. Our understanding of wow. accretion disks does not even fully explain how conservation of momentum is kept. There is still some mystery about where all the momentum goes, but the sheer power at play is undeniable. Einstein may have been wrong. It evidently is possible to fall into a black hole, but when some black holes are firing material away from them at near relativistic speeds for distances spanning galaxies, well, it's evidently possible to not fall into them too. And once you factor in the force of matter that is millions of degrees hot, pushing out at you as they attempt to shed their own momentum, perhaps you wouldn't want to get too close to one anyway. <laughs> no. If the concepts and science behind this series have been a little hard to wrap your head around, don't worry, it was for me too. One great way to begin properly understanding the series would be to use a platform I'm particularly fond of, Brilliant. It is an amazing Brilliant. tool for learning STEM interactively, and I've been enjoying their content on scientific thinking. Oh, this is an ad. This course has built up my knowledge of the universe in a fun way, oh, and it an explains ad? the why difficult topics oh, yeah, I've covered ad. in this series. 
about light and relativity. I really love this uh, video. I think this is my first time to watch from Astrum. I, for sure, uh, Astrum is gonna is one of my favorite um, channel now on YouTube. Added on my favorite list. <laughs> so yeah, this is the way he explained this. Um, what do you call it? This very complex uh, topic is amazing i mean i really enjoyed it and his his tone is so friendly i like it and you know it's we're still not a uh, hundred percent sure that we can't fall into the black hole einstein may be wrong but it's kind of relief to me to know that maybe there's a big possibility that we can't fall into one <laughs> wow this is uh, i like how he explained everything Thank you so much to all my Patreons, Ryan Lewis, uh, Michelle Amber Phillips, Empty Duwali, and RV Games. Thank you so much for your love and support. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to be part of my Patreon, uh, I usually post uh, TikTok dances on my Patreons. And uh, if you want to have, if you want to have an early access to my video, and if you want to talk to me personally, you can check out my Patreon account. And thank you so much in advance. So, yeah, thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you in my next one. Stay positive. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Mwah. Hi, guys. Please don't forget to check my webpage at the Potter Restoration Polarization Repair. I'm just going to be live in your old photos and make it look like a new one in a very affordable price. And it will make a great gift for your parents for Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, or even birthdays. I'll bet you they're going to love it. You can talk to me personally and I could help you choose the best package that suits you. So what are you waiting for? Please click that link below.